Today we are recording this video to celebrate our two-year anniversary in Ecuador. So, cheers to you, my dear. Cheers. Cheers to you all for watching. Thank you. I was a little anxious to drink this. Apparently. Ooh. For anyone that has been following us, you know what we have been going through for the last couple of years. You know, we started our journey back in the States when we decided to quit our jobs and move to Ecuador. So we went through the whole process of getting the house ready, getting our visas, selling the house, moving to Ecuador. And Downsizing and yeah. preparing our move to our new home. Yeah, in our new early retirement life. Yes. Um, we did kind of jump we, into it yeah. feet first. Um, we dived. And we're not good swimmers. Yeah. <laughs> we... um. We made it. We floated back to the top. Yeah. Um, so we're here. Yeah. You know, a lot of people take a lot of time to prepare. And, you know, we we just kind of took advantage of a lot of opportunities, opportunities that, that came, came at up. that moment. Right. So there was no uh, there was no time to wait. Yeah. And, yeah, it was a haste. As most people say, it was a haste. It was a haste, yeah. We, we were just <laughs> we extremely were lucky, honestly. Like, yeah. lucky and you know, we did a little planning. But a lot of luck was involved too. Yeah, it the what they say the stars or the moon, mm, yeah. whatever planets align. They <laughs> align, and it was like yeah. it's now or never. Yeah. yeah. So um, that was so our that first day in Ecuador was March, first day living in Ecuador was March thirty first of uh, twenty twenty two. So two years today. Yeah, as we record this, it is I Easter see. weekend. Because when we arrived the first time, Easter, it, it was it like was, the following, two, it was, the it was follow two following weekends. Because we spent two weeks in Waikil first. Oh, yeah. Remember? Wow. Yeah, we came here like April. That's a bit different. Yeah, we came here like April 15th. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's Easter weekend here. And in Salinas, Easter weekend is a big, big holiday. It's really busy. Right. Or we would have recorded this outside. <laughs> and it's hot. <laughs> and it's it really is, hot. It's oh, hot. my goodness. No. It's so hot. And it was early. It was like nine something. It's already it was blazing. We went to breakfast yeah. this morning. It was yeah. it was hot out there. Yeah. So we had uh what we had, Trujillo? Trujillo, yeah. Yeah. I'm probably um, saying that wrong, I'm sorry. Trujillo. <laughs> I have to say I have a favorite uh Trujillo dish that we that I like. Yeah. That's not too far from where we stay. But this is the first time I had it at Charlie's. And it's number three on my on list. Your list. <laughs> it's it's down yeah. there. If I find another, it may go down even further. This is the second time I've had it at Charlie's. They, they have two different locations here in Salinas. So one's a little bit closer than the other. And the first time I had it at the second their second location. Which is yeah, located one, at Locals Point. Yeah, Locals Point here in Salinas. That one was like He flavor, said it was up here. Flavor it was like number one. Like it tasted the best out of all the grills I've had. But value is still the one that's closest to us. It's only a few bucks. And it's really good. We had some breakfast this morning. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it was hot. It was even hot on the scooter ride over there. Like, it's, my skin's burning. It's crazy. That just leads us into our being uh, being here two years and being a lot more comfortable Yes. with the, the, language. the language, the social norms, traditions mm -hmm. and learning stuff constantly constantly <laughs> like we're learning something new Every, almost weekly daily yeah just uh something i mentioned when we we're in the restaurant this morning is that like when it comes to learning spanish right everyone knows if you just learning spanish later in life you know how difficult it is just like i can understand someone who's just trying to learn english i get it i will never i will i didn't do this anyway but i would never like belittle someone for not being able to speak english because it's it's a difficult it's language. Difficult. It's a I, very I know difficult time language. I'm having learned Spanish. So, <laughs> if one, I had to learn English, I think oh, I man. would learn Spanish before easier than I would learn English. Absolutely, because English is yeah, absolutely it's confusing, very confusing. Although, Although one of the things I brought up today was there are words in Spanish, or at least here in Ecuador, I have to say that that mean multiple things. 
and I have a hard time deciphering. Well, I used to have a hard time deciphering when to use those words. Now I just use it, and if it's wrong, maybe they'll correct me. Prime example of what I'm talking about is cold or ice cream or ice or like ice water, right? Gelato. And it has, there's variations of this word. Mm -hmm. And it seems like here is if you just say gelato, it's like they just know what you're talking about. They so, know from Americans what well, we're talking well, about. Well, what I'm saying is like if you're talking to somebody who's selling like ice cream or some kind of like frozen drink and you say like gelato, like they know that's what you mean, ice cream. Or if you're in a restaurant and you ask for like a glass of, I don't know, water or juice or whatever, and you can you can also say helado, which means like cold. It means frozen. The fro the drink you want the drink cold, like you want with it ice frozen. in it. Yeah, with ice in it. Right. Um, so it's spelled. You got the H E L A D O. You got the H I E L O. You got the H I E L A D O. So all of those for him is like the same. He just yeah, said helado. Yeah. And either he's asking for ice cream. <laughs> He's asking right. for a frozen juice or he wants it cold. Right, because like Frio isn't good enough. Frio is good no, enough. No, I, I mean, yeah, sort of. <laughs> sort of, sort of. Not really. But those are like some of the things that we learned. But you've learned when we're having, uh, when we're eating and people are either leaving or coming in, they say. When per vetchel. Um, <laughs> try, look, look, look. He's My trying. Pronunciation, he's trying. I, I know. They That's, know what he's saying. Win for vetcho. So it it took me a while. I knew I had to do something with like greeting people when they're eating, right? And the one restaurant we were just referring to that we go to a lot, people walk in and they say that they say that to everyone who's sitting down eating, right? So I asked our friend Stephanie one day what that meant because I kept hearing it, and she explained it to me. That basically it means, well, her husband Kenneth said, it's like, enjoy your meal. She's like, yes, but no. Is <laughs> There's more to it than that. But essentially, like the most simple form of it is like, enjoy your meal. Mm -hmm. And it's something you say to the people who are eating their meal in like a restaurant or something. So, yeah, that's just one of those things that I've learned, that I picked up, that I know I would have never probably learned on Duolingo. Mm -mm. And I don't Not know. I don't know how regional that saying is. If it's you know, all over Latin America, and maybe Spain. I have no idea. But I do know that here it's said quite often, and it's just one of those things we picked up. Mm -hmm. uh, just just like even here in our building, the the staff might call us for something on the on our little phone, and you know they only speak Spanish. And over the last couple of years, we have been able to start picking up some of the things that they're saying when they when we pick up the phone and say hola, and they just start rattling off. You catch that piquete? Ca yeah, yeah, piquete. Like you got a package, you know, <laughs> um, or or something. There's always yeah. there's always something that we can pick up in the in the conversation. And we're like, oh, okay, see, see. Yeah. Um, and it takes time. Yeah. You know, uh, even though I study every day. Um, I don't study for hours, but I know how to make a sentence now. I cannot make a sentence on a fly, on the fly. No. Because as soon as they, blah, 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 my brain just goes blank. Mm -hmm. If I take the time, I can actually say what I want. Now, am I, like he said, am I pronouncing it correctly? Maybe not. Yeah, sometimes I know, sometimes I feel like I know I'm saying it right. They're still looking at me like, <laughs> I know I said that right. I, I practiced this. I know I said it right. Anybody else understands it? Right. But, but what I will say, um, depending on what region they're from, they may say it different. Yeah. And uh, we only know what by what Google tells us or Duolingo. That's what we get. And it may not translate to that person because they may say it differently. Yeah. The, the Spanish is coming along. We're getting better and it's going to take time. And I am more hard on myself because I am one of those people who really wants to know what others are saying to me. And she knows it. I am. <laughs> she want to know what people are saying around her and to her. 
I, uh, yeah. I have no comment, but yes, you know, one of these days that may save our lives yeah, right. if I know what they're saying. Like, hey, we got to go right now. Mm-hmm. So don't question me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so when we first got here, no Espanol whatsoever other than... The basic uh, greetings. Hola. Yeah. Buenos dias. Might be able to order food. Gracias. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, another thing is about like ordering food. When we first got here, we pretty much had to have a, a uh, menu that had English in it or translated with our phone. Mm-hmm. Now? We, we, we kind of quickly stopped needing that. Now it doesn't even matter. We just we pretty much know everything on the menu in Spanish. Yes. Unless it's just some some name of some dish that we've just never heard. Right. Um, but the ingredients, like we pretty much got that down pat. taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I no ten cebollas. Yeah, I don't like onions. Yeah. And masada. And, and mustaza. Mustaza. Yeah, no mustaza. mustaza. It's disgusting. It's not. It's Whatever. Awesome. Our habits and um, our I would say like our knowledge of just the culture in general, like being patient. Yes. Uh, because I think I've said this before. It almost seems like the Ecuadorian way is just. It's relaxed. Kind of, it's really relaxed, right? <laughs> it's relaxed. And it's like, you know, nothing, nothing ever starts on. Like, this is one thing. It took us, it's taken us a while to get used no, to it. No, it took him a while. It, I'm, I, really, I, I'm really like I, an on time person. I right? hopped on real quick. Like, why are you rushing? Yeah, I'm why really an on time person. So. He if is. something, if if there is something here that's, that's set up by Ecuadorians and it's supposed to happen at, at like, three o'clock, it's not going to start until like four. It's or not 4:30. starting to five. At, at the very least, it's not starting until four. It's starting at five. So it's starting at five. People will start showing up at four. The event doesn't start till five. And I'm not even talking about like a party. I'm, to, no, I'm talking. Just, yeah, I'm talking about like a scheduled like public event. Five. And I keep trying to tell him, I'm like, why are we leaving? He said, it started at three. Look, it's not going to start till five. I can't five. help it. But and anyway. And we're the first ones showing, walking around, people looking like they still setting up. No, we've gotten better. No, he's gotten better. He's gotten better. He's gotten better. Because I was already on. I'm like, look, I'm chilling. This is what I get. Listen, we've gotten it's better. Time to go. We've gotten better. It's time to go. What are you doing, Sean? It's time to go. And I'm like, Steve, just sit back we've and We've gotten rest. better. So. <laughs> I'm not listening to her right now. Um, no, we haven't gotten better. Because yeah. just a few weeks ago, we were invited to a party. And I was, like, taking my time. He was sitting here waiting. He didn't say anything. But his body language was like... And guess what? We still was early. Yeah, we were. It's okay. Uh, we had nothing else to do. So, <laughs> <laughs> what my point is... We got used to like the the way that time works here. It's a little bit different, and it seems like everything starts late, but it seems like they're always in a hurry. What? So, all right, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. Everything starts late, but they're in a hurry. Right, and I feel like those two things are correlated. So, okay, like if you're out on the road, right? You <laughs> swear everyone was in the biggest hurry. <laughs> Everyone beep, like beep, they got beep, yeah, beep. they got places to be, places, the, things yeah. to do, places to go, people to see. The light haven't even changed. Right, they they're, know they're, it's about they're to going change. before the light changes. That's normal, completely. I'm like, man, everyone's always in a hurry, but everything always starts late. And I think that <laughs> yes, those things are correlated. Because- because since everything, since everyone's always running late, they're always in a hurry. You get what I'm saying? Yes, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, I, because I'm late, I'm trying to get there. Right. So right. I got I'm rushing. Right. But you was already you're already late, so yeah. why are you rushing? But we why I say that we've gotten better with this, not just our end, but on the other end. So like if we know someone's supposed to be meeting us, or if someone's supposed to be coming to pick us up or whatever, I you, you automatically build in like an extra fifteen minute cushion or something. Like uh, if I told him I'd be here at three thirty. You'd be here at three twenty. Three, yeah. Yeah, like if I need to be at three thirty, I say be here at three fifteen or three twenty or something like that. So those are some of the little cultural things that we've gotten used to, and it it honestly doesn't bother us really, unless there's we haven't had a situation where we really needed somebody to be here at a certain time. No. So. Well, I did have. I, okay. Okay. Yes, we did. 
So I was waiting on a taxi because I was meeting someone. And they had already told me that, you know, I don't have a lot of time. And I need for you to be on time. Now, this was an Ecuadorian. I was like, okay. So I'm always on time. But yet, I cannot force the taxi driver to... Get there faster. Get faster. So, get there faster. So, we got there maybe five minutes late. It was like, yeah. I got a text basically saying, "Uh, I'm here. (laughs) Rolling her eyes. (laughs) Where are you? And I'm like, wow. That that hasn't happened. (laughs) That was a first, but you know. But that was out of my control. Yeah. But that was a first. And so, now I know. Hindsight, I should have. Built in an extra five minute cushion on the because the taxi driver arrived on time. It's it just, just that it, it, was it took longer than I thought it would take to get there. Yeah, it was traffic. Yeah, you know, but but that was the first. Yeah. So now that I was know. It was a busy weekend. It was a lot of. Traffic it was. It was last weekend when we because we didn't expect that many people being right. Town. It, was, it was busy. Yeah. Um. But anyway. Yeah. So some of those cultural things that we have learned, we have adjusted to. We're pretty laid back anyway, so it's not like. It's we not like it was really that big a deal. You know, we're not we're not out here to like cuss people out for being late. Like, we don't care. Yeah. We've learned about uh, a lot about housing, and particularly here on the coast, our like decision to continue to rent until we find the right place, whether it be here on the coast or somewhere else, has been very beneficial. Yes, because we have learned so so much. much. If you're coming here from the U.S. or Canada, assume. That anyone who's trying to sell you something overcharging. is overcharging. Buy a lot. Right. Anyone who is looking for you, they are absolutely charging you more than you should have to pay. Now, we're adults. You can choose to go whatever route you want. I'm just telling you that the people who are looking for you are going to overcharge you. And what he means, not looking for you, but looking looking for places for you, looking at places for you, they already know that these these places are higher than they need to be and it's probably best to find, be, uh, what is it, befriend some Ecuadorians mm-hmm. because they will be the one to give you the true price. Now, not all, but right. if, you, if you have a good relationship or good rapport. The more you know, the better. You would make the, a better decision yeah. because I would just say the coast is outrageously overpriced. So, all I'm saying is, I, I don't want to. I don't want this to be like you know, all like uh, negative or whatever. But I'm just saying that if you come down here, you want to befriend. You want to rent for a while. Befriend some locals, some like Ecuadorian locals. I'm not saying you can't deal with expats or anything like that. Well, I'm talking about when you're looking for properties and whatnot, start with like Facebook Marketplace and like some locals. Look around, go drive around yourself and try to talk to the owners when you can because um, some of these places can be outrageous. Now, you can find decent deals. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't find decent deals with like expat realtors and stuff like that. Just know that like if, if, People are coming to you or looking for people like you, then they're going to charge you more money. That's just, it's just a fact. Look around for the deals. They, they, they are there to be had. But just know that the fact that so many um, expats come and they just pay buy. more, they pay more than what they maybe should. Because they it, can't afford it. Right. It That's drives the, the price up for everybody. Right. So then when someone's coming here thinking that like they can pay you know, this certain amount. Well, they should be able to, but they can't because the market has now been inflated and then people overpaying. And you will find a lot of places that are for sale here and they will sit. Yeah. And know and whoever owns it is is going to sit until the next person who doesn't know come in and purchase it. Now some some of these uh places are outdated and you would think like, wow you're asking for that? That's that needs some work, yeah. but it's, it's not going to like location. It's proximity to the beach or proximity. Right. If you're like somewhere in, in closer to like Quito or Cuenca, they'll say, "Well, it's proximity to the city or whatever." There's going to be something. If you're here and you're thinking that you're going to get a deal, like you really, you're going to have to look for it sometimes. 
You don't want to be gringo because a gringo price, that is a thing. Yeah. It's a true thing. Uh, it has happened to us mm -hmm. and it's not going to happen. Learn. You got to learn from it. You, yeah, it's you got to learn from your mistakes. Yeah, it's going to happen. You got to so, learn from it. Um, and everybody can't be there to save you. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and knowing the language ain't going to always save you either. So next, I want to talk about how we've adjusted our living habits, which didn't take a whole lot of adjustment, honestly. We, we have a decent pattern now. Stay in our apartment most of the time. <laughs> Not for any reason other than like right now because it's just hot outside. It is super hot. Yeah. I yeah. mean. Okay. It's it's under 90. So like don't 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 yeah, get it twisted. Yeah. Like it's in the 80s. Like but low it's, 80s. It's very. But that sun. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Whoa. Let yeah, me tell you. Tough. Remember we. Okay. That's the thing. When we first got here, it was the same. Because we were looking for shade when Everywhere. we were walking on the Malacone. And so when we came to an opening where a road, uh, that was an open street, and that breeze came through, yeah. oh my God, we loved it. We loved it because that sun is the same today. Treacherous. It's treacherous. treacherous. It's like, ah! Right. If yeah. you ever see, what's the, what's the show we were watching? Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem. <laughs> When the girl. the girl laid out in the sun and, and, the, and she like little, dehydrated great. and they rolled her up. Yeah, that's yeah, that's how the sun is right now. You will be dehydrated. It would just suck all the the water. Yeah, um, it's not it's not unbearable. I don't get don't get us wrong. Don't get us wrong. Like we go we still go outside, but we 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 go out and say okay. Where instead of walking all the way down, no, the where are we going? Right, which way are we going? We going this way? We going that way? How far are we going? We 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 discuss all this right before, before we start. We, walking. You need your hat. You need your sun, you right. need your, your shade. Okay, we got to go past Bank of Wild Kill. We're gonna take the scooter. Yeah, it's a little too far. Yeah, like, it's not not that's too far. Like we're walking. No, the sun. It's just the sun. The sun is unbearable yeah. right now, so we're gonna yeah. take the scooter just to get a little breeze. Because yeah. once you it take that good. helmet off, yeah, it feels good. That breeze and that scooter feels good. So yeah, we we stay inside quite a bit. And we're fine with it. You know, we entertain ourselves. We do. You know, the internet's good, so we're we're fine. <laughs> and we we nosy. We go out we on nosy, the balcony. Yeah. We hear like we just heard the the uh, the bus blowing at somebody. Yeah. Um, and ordinarily, like we weren't recording the video, we jump up and see like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> somebody yelling at somebody. Yeah, um, they had the procession yesterday yeah, for for, for uh, East for Good Friday. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we can see a lot from our balcony. So it's 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 okay to be nosy sometimes. Yeah, we're very it's very entertaining. <laughs> we have a good spot. Yeah, so. but yeah, living living is just it, it is what it is. We just we're just chilling most of the time um, until the weather gets cooler. <laughs> uh, I, honestly, like you'll probably see us outside a lot more once the weather gets cooler. Yeah. Um, but right now, yeah, yeah it's too hot. we we're very comfortable. Yeah. And there's a lot on television, mm -hmm. and like he said, we have a lot of activities that we do together. So yeah, we are very entertained. Yeah, another thing that you know we picked up over the last couple of years is just being, um, I would say, just being comfortable with not having a schedule. That's we impose that on ourselves. If you come here and your plan is to work, you know, whether you be like a digital nomad or something like that, more power to you. That just wasn't our plan when we came. The plan was not to do anything that we didn't want to actually do. That's what we do. We don't have an actual schedule. We even for like for for this channel, we try to make sure we put out at least one video every week. That's about as much of a schedule as we have. For our other two channels is when we feel like it. Yeah. Um, sometimes I might make two or three videos at once on my other channel. He does. And sometimes I would go weeks. Um, because I just don't feel like whenever it. I feel like it. Yeah. <laughs> and editing videos take forever, especially, especially like movies and stuff. It takes a long time, but yeah, when we have things to do, when we have a lot of things to do, like in our personal life, that's when you'll notice like, okay, only one video came out this week. <laughs> So if you see like multiple videos come out, it's like okay, we had yeah, time. We had time. We had a little time. Yeah, but yeah, we still gotta live. We still gotta have our personal time. Yeah. But one thing I will say, you know, when we first got here, we 
we didn't we cooked, but we ate out a, a lot. A little more, yeah. Yeah, because we wanted to try different things. Yeah, we want to try everything. <laughs> and so now we have a very few spots that we um, visit. On a regular. Yeah, on a regular. And that's still not very regular. No. But I love to cook. He knows. I like trying yeah. new things. I like baking. And he's been so generous. Yeah, I'll eat everything. I don't care. And, and um, eating what I prepare, so. Yeah. Um, the other night, what did we, you had? I made donuts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What that, like, lime, sugar, icing. Oh, so good. It was so good, y'all. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, but, yeah. And like, then he made the uh, the Michelados. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, I made the Michelados, yeah. Um, yes. And By the time you see this, that video would already be out. So. Yeah. Um, they were very good. They, you know? Yeah, I yeah, made them multiple times. They're delicious. That's, a, that's something different yeah. because... It reminds me of a Bloody Mary because you have to use tomato juice. Yeah. But it's made with... Some hot sauce. Beer. Yeah. And some hot sauce. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy that it's so refreshing of a drink. Yes. Yeah, it is. It really is. But yeah, as, as far as she said about like us eating out, um, usually maybe like once in a week, either breakfast, lunch, or dinner or something like that. Maybe once, maybe, maybe. twice in a week. No. Nope. And I say it that because it could be it could yeah. be like we'll go right across the street wherever we get. Oh, if we breakfast. go to the if we go to the movies, we're yeah, gonna eat we're gonna eat, yeah, we'll yeah. definitely eat out. We we'll go to the movies, so yeah. yeah, like once or twice a week we might eat yeah, out. That's true. Um, so we we actually save a lot of money on. Uh, food. I don't know if we do because we eat a lot. Well, well okay, <laughs> we save a lot of money when it comes to like going out to eat. Yeah, yeah, we we eat. Yeah, we eat. we like to eat. Y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry. We like to eat. We try to stay in shape, but that's that's because we eat so much. So, yeah, I haven't been in the gym. I'm I'm going to get back in the gym starting next month, which is April, April. next week. Yeah, so I'm gonna gradually, you know, pace myself back into the gym. Yeah, we found out over the last couple of years. Speaking of what you were just saying about like the healthcare system and how to use it and the advantages and disadvantages of having private healthcare versus the public health care versus no health care. Basically, all three are viable. You can get away without having any. You just got to pay, pay for stuff out of pocket, which is typically affordable in comparison to what you would pay in the United States. Or you can do private or public health insurance, and either one is a viable option. It just depends on what you got going on with you. You know, um, a lot of people that come here will still have, like, a lot of, like, older retirees will have, like, uh, is it Medicare? Medicare. And, you know, if they need something, depending on what it is, they're able to get it done in the States or they can get it done here cheaper. If you've got the private health care here or the public health care here, you can get a lot done. And like I was just saying, if for some reason you're like, man, I don't even feel like making an appointment doing all this, you can just walk into like a dentist's office and, and get a cleaning and, you know, cavity filled or whatever and pay right out of pocket. It doesn't cost that much. That part, you know, we've learned, we've just learned a lot. Yeah. Just going through the whole going, system. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All in all three of those options, yeah. <laughs> we've done all it's, three. It's 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 a learning experience. Yeah, it's definitely different. Uh, but like you said, it's definitely more attainable to have it done any if you need work or seeing a doctor than it is in the U.S. Yeah, you know, you, you if you decide to go to a doctor in the U.S., you're looking at two to three hundred dollars out of pocket. You know, just to go in to talk about what's going on with you. Versus paying a twenty five dollar, twenty five dollar a fee. Yeah, because yeah. I can't even say a copay, just a yeah, twenty five dollar fee. fee, just to go in and talk to the doctor about then, what's and, going on. And then the follow up is like included in that twenty five dollars, which it used to be back in the day. Whenever yeah. you go to the doctor for a follow up, they wouldn't charge you because you're coming back based on what you went before. Right. But um, I think that went away. Yeah, it don't matter. We don't use it. Yeah. Um, but here, yeah, you know, you pay. Pay the one time and the follow up is included. Oh, another thing I forgot we learned riding the bus. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it took us. It took it, us almost almost a, almost a year. We went to Bali the first year we were here, and we saw all those scooters in Bali. And when we came back, that's when we decided we were going to buy a scooter. And were we riding the bus then? Yeah. I want to say we had yeah, maybe we, just started. We had just started. It was about so six months. We after six months. After we were six here. months. Yeah. yeah. We had been told about it. But because we never rode the bus really in the U.S. Yeah. 
it's like, uh, I don't know, you know. I didn't, I didn't know the routes. Yeah, I, I just don't want to get on a bus and I don't know where I'm going. Right. But, like, people say, you won't know until you try. Yeah. And you got to get on and figure it out. So, that's what we did. And the bus routes are, we've been on three, three of them? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, three, three of yeah. them. And There's only a couple places we go on the bus anyway. Right. And now, some of the buses will take you to, like, another city. Libertad and Ancon and yeah. Concita. Some, yeah. And Concita. Some have long routes. Yeah. Um, I think you pay a little bit more, yeah. but... Or you may have to go to, like, the depot and then... Sw- I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we, we, don't, haven't we haven't got, done it. Yeah, yeah, we haven't gotten it far. So, <laughs> if we ever go to Libertad, we usually take a taxi. Yeah. Um, but, like he was saying, we started on... We got on the bus. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's so inexpensive because we were... We realized how much money we were wasting by going to, like, Supermaxi, which isn't that far. It's too far to walk, but it's, it's like, it's not that far. It's and not too far. It's too far for us. Because some yeah, people some do. some people do walk there. Yeah, it's where we are. It's not technically too far to walk. This is further than I'm going to walk. And it's hot better. out there. Yeah. We keep saying yeah. it's hot out there. It's we have hard. walked to Supermaxi. You know that, right? Did we, we? Went, we went to, the, I went to the doctor, and we walked to Supermaxi. When I oh, tell, from the opposite direction? Yes. From the opposite direction. Okay. When yeah. I tell you. That was a long walk. Ooh. And that wasn't even as long as it would have been if we walked from here to Supermax. <laughs> it was from the, where her doctor was. Um, Ooh. Yeah. And, I, and that was a day where we were And we were like, stopping in the shade. Right. We, we, I think we were saying, like, either we didn't have change on us or I, whatever it was. No, whatever. we just, we had change. We could have called a taxi. We just decided. We, we decided was like, to walk. It's yeah. not that far. Yeah. That we was was a, like, it's not that far. That was a mistake. It was too far that day. It was too hot that day. If it was cloudy, it would have been fine. Yeah, we have walked. It was cloudy. We have walked to the mall from um, the doctor's office. Right. And, you know, we don't mind walking. Just, you know, if it's cloud coverage or what do you call it? Uh, it's a little overcast. Uh, overcast. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. But when the sun is out, oh, if you're not prepared. You need an umbrella. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. This is my umbrella. Hold yeah. the umbrella. Yeah. But the bus routes are really um, affordable. And it's not bad. It's not many people are on the bus when we get on there. Most of the time. Unless it's like school day and right when the kids are getting out and maybe yeah. people getting off work yeah. sometimes. Now, we have gotten on there and we almost didn't have a seat. Yeah. yeah. One time. It was twice when we got on. It was really packed. Yeah. Was really people packed. were standing up. We were like, what in the world is going yeah, it just, on? I think it was just like the particular time of day that yeah. we got on. I don't I don't know. Just, we we just picked a bad time yeah. twice. And it, was, it was packed. Now, I will say that if your experience is probably different if you live in like Cuenca or Quito or something like that, where it's more, it's a little more organized, mm-hmm. um, where you have like posted routes and you can go online and, and do all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, here, it's not quite like that. It's just kind of like there's a bus coming and they just pull over and stop. Um, which I love. Cause which is cool. Because you don't cool. have a bus stop. Like right. in the US, there's, you got to walk like maybe a half a mile to get to a bus stop yeah. so the bus stop can pick you up. If you're standing right here, that bus will pick you up, which yeah. is great. It stops so much when you're going. Um, I understand the purpose of having like regular bus stops, but the flip side is like it's hot out there. I mean, people can't be walking to like a bus stop. You know, just why just, can I wave you down and you pick me up? Hey, yeah, like hey, I, I'm, I ain't saying there's anything wrong with. It. I said this is good and bad. Um, I love it, but we yeah we've gotten really accustomed to that because we were like we were wasting two or three dollars, you know, on, per trip to go places. And, you know, as opposed to paying 70 cents for the both of us. Yeah. If you're um, a senior citizen, you only pay 15. Yeah. So, so it just it just costs more cost effective and we're cheap. So that's just what I'm not is. cheap. We just we're frugal. We just found a more affordable way <laughs> to travel. What I've learned is I like going to Super Maxi more so than going to the Epo Market. And why is that? The Epo Market has way too many people there for me, and now that they have a self checkout, it's just it's it's just too much. Yeah. It is literally too much for me because it's like a Walmart, and I hate going to Walmart. So I like going to Super Maxi. Super Maxi has a variety of items that I like that I can get to try. Versus going to Eagle Market and I'm stuck and I'm trying to go down this little bitty aisles 
with people with carts and people don't want to move because the aisle is not that big. And he prefers going to Eagle Market. No, 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 Stop. I do not prefer going to Eagle Market. I don't mind going to Eagle Market because it's at the mall and I can get multiple things done sometimes. If we, if I'm only looking for groceries, then I will agree with her. Let's just go to Supermaxi. Supermaxi has better selection when in the groceries. Yes. And I'm just saying that, like, if there are multiple things I may need, then yes, I prefer to just go to the Eper Market. Even though, like she said, Eper Market is crowded. It is. Some days, some days it is insane. It's always no. Insane. Some days we've gone there. We've, some days we've gone there, and it's been pretty. It's been pretty. You had mellow. to be there when it when it opens. <laughs> There's a certain time. It's basically like ten thirty in the morning. You need to be Maybe there around noon or something. I don't know. Because after the movies, after the two years we have now gotten our new visas, which are just basically our old visas again, because you know we've explained this before, but we lost our initial ninety days before we ever came here. Um, yeah. So we had to apply for the temporary residency visas again. Yeah, or we would have been applying for permanent, but right. hey. So we've got our new ones, and we have some new adventures planned yes. since we now have our visas. Um, so some new things planned, um, some totally new things that we haven't been able to really do um, that we have planned for this year. Yes, so stay um, tuned. Please stay tuned pretty exciting changes possibly or i don't know new looks new places new locations new things for us to do and see we really appreciate anyone who has been on this journey with us yes um, it's been a great two years for us we hope it has been for anybody else and if you were just looking for some little, a little encouragement to take that leap look i always say is like we did it Dive and, in into yeah, our videos and check in. it out. <laughs> Thank you to our members for yeah. signing up. Yeah, yeah and, all, and all the support. And we really appreciate everyone that likes and shares and subscribes. And we're we gonna, love it. We hope you love it. And we're going to keep bringing content. Join us on our journey. Once again, thanks. You can check out our merch store. That helps support us. Um, and we're we, living, loving abroad. That's right. So... <laughs> We'll be back soon. Bye. Bye.